We are writing the year 2020. And despite all the weird stuff happening this year, we are also flooded with the latest and greatest cameras you could imagine. With X megapixels here, frame rates beyond anything you could even wish for 10 years ago, and all the other settings we take for granted to just grab our cameras and be ready for whatever you'll throw yourself into. But rewind time back 20 years and more, and all of that was a different story. Depending on the situation you wanted to take your photographs in, you'd have to think what film would fit the best, black and white or color, what ISO rating and so on. If situations might be unpredictable, you might as well have brought multiple cameras with different film stocks in them. So what's this video about, if you didn't already know from the title? I wanted to take things a step back and experience the lack of all that modern day camera comfort. Here and there I find myself taking photos of my friends, who pursue another creative profession, which is making music and organizing small underground parties for all the like-minded people in our city. At least it was until last year when there wasn't a deadly pandemic roaming around the globe. Usually I use my Sony a6500 for this. It's small and lightweight, but it packs all you would need. 4K video, IBIS, great autofocus and all the comfort you might expect from a modern camera. With this one I wouldn't mind cranking up the ISO to 12800 and still get usable shots. Now this is where the fun part begins. I threw all the convenient features of the modern digital cameras overboard, hopped on the internet and looked for the perfect film for this setting. And there it was. The Ilford Delta 3200. In reality this film is actually rated at ISO 1000. But Ilford themselves say to best rate this film at ISO 3200. They even claim it can be pushed to ISO 25000. It's also DX coded for an ISO rating of 3200. So you can just counter adjust your camera if you want to shoot it lower or higher. So I got myself a roll, packed the Canon 3000N. I chose this camera because it's the only film camera I own, which has a flash and I thought this might come in handy. But more on that later. And threw myself into the cold water. Trying to shoot such a high rated film for the first time with no prior experience whatsoever. The lenses I used were an old 50mm f1.8 with an M42 mount adapted to the Canon and a Takina 11-16mm f2.8 which I used a lot on my 600D a couple of years ago. Despite it being an APS-C lens, it is in fact usable on a full frame camera without any vignetting when zoomed in at 16mm. So come along and follow me on my journey to maybe learn from the mistakes I'm about to make. Welcome back. So, did you notice something? That's right, almost all of the shots were massively underexposed, despite using similar settings to what I'm used to with my digital camera at these ISO levels and developed at the times taken from the official Ilford datasheet, using Kodak HC110 Dilution B at 20 degrees Celsius and 14 and a half minutes. So why is that? For that we have to look at how a picture is captured on an analog film. Usually most black and white films are negative films meaning the areas hit by light react and get darker when developed. So the brighter a scene, the more light can hit the film and cause a reaction. 
Darker areas or less light on the other hand don't cause a reaction on our film emulsion, therefore there is little to no information and the part remains blank. And that's why it's always said that analog film has a much higher highlight recovery than digital and vice versa when it comes to underexposed areas. So even though you have a high sensitive film, when there is little to almost no light you ain't getting an image no matter what. And that's where the built-in flash on that Canon saved me and I got at least some usable shots. And I have to say I really like them and their gritty look, which I think is very suitable for that kind of setting. And I'll definitely shoot more of those high ISO films in the future, since I really like the rough and contrasty look they can give you. But now knowing how far I can push it in terms of low light and probably invest in an external flash. So what's the takeaway of this video and why am I doing all of this, you might ask, since it's such a pain in the butt and most of the shots are pretty much wasted. Probably for the same reason you are here and watching this video and shooting film in the 21st century. Growing up with digital cameras, you sometimes lose the sense for the whole process that is in photography. And in my opinion, analog photography is just way more rewarding. Seeing your shots after a long wait, not knowing if you nailed it or not. If you got all the settings right. But then getting it back from the lab or out of your developing tank and having your pictures physically there in your hands is an experience you only truly understand when you try it yourself. I don't do it for the perfect clean shots. I do it for the process. And for all the happy mistakes that come along with it and I wouldn't want to miss it anymore. Like they say, the best way to learn things is to go out and just try it for yourself. And making mistakes isn't that bad like it might sound. You often learn more from your mistakes than from success. So with that said, go grab your camera, load it up with any film you have laying around and go out, have fun and learn new things. So until next time, bye!